It's in your kitchen drawers, it's inside your shampoo, and it might even be inside your body. It looks like plastic, feels like rubber, but structurally, it's actually closer to a rock. We are talking about silicone. For a material we use every single day, almost no one actually knows what it is. Is it natural? Is it synthetic? And why do we confuse it with the computer chips in our phones? The story of silicone is one of the strangest in chemistry. It involves a scientist who spent his entire life studying it, only to conclude that it was completely useless right before it changed the world. Today, let's find out what exactly silicone is, right here in Simple Things Surprising Histories. First, let's clear up the biggest confusion. You have likely heard the words silicon and silicone used interchangeably, but in the world of science, that one letter E at the end makes all the difference. Silicon, without the E, is an element. It's number 14 on the periodic table. It's found in sand and quartz, and it's the second most abundant element in the Earth's crust. It's the hard, brittle stuff used to make computer chips, Silicone, with the E, is something else entirely. You can't dig silicone out of the ground. It is a synthetic polymer. Think of it this way. If silicon is the flour, silicone is the cake, humans have to take that raw element, process it, and mix it with chemicals derived from fossil fuels to create the rubbery, heat-resistant material we know today. It is a hybrid, part organic chemistry, part geology. The story of this hybrid material takes us back to the early 20th century and a British chemist named Frederick Kipping. Kipping is effectively the father of silicone. He spent nearly 40 years experimenting with the element silicon. He was trying to see if he could make it behave like carbon. He managed to create these long chains of molecules, but they didn't behave the way he wanted. They were sticky, oily, or rubbery. To Kipping, they were just annoying byproducts. In fact, he famously concluded that these compounds had, quote, no practical importance. He couldn't have been more wrong. Just as Kipping retired, World War II began. The military needed a material that could insulate aircraft engines at high altitudes, where normal rubber would shatter from the cold and normal grease would melt from the engine heat. Kipping's useless, sticky mess turned out to be the only thing that could survive those extremes. So why is silicone so tough? Why can you put a silicone baking mat in a 400-degree oven and it comes out fine? It comes down to its backbone. Most plastics have a backbone made of carbon-to-carbon -carbon bonds. These are strong, but heat and UV light can break them down over time. That's why old plastic cracks in the sun. Silicone is different. Its backbone is an alternating chain of silicon and oxygen. This is the same chemical bond that holds rocks and quartz together. It takes a massive amount of energy to break that bond. This gives silicone a split personality. Because of the oxygen, it's chemically related to rock, making it incredibly resistant to heat and water. But because of the other molecules attached to it, it remains flexible and soft. It is essentially a flexible rock. Because it's so stable, silicone is the ultimate shapeshifter. When Neil Armstrong walked on the moon, the soles of his boots were made of silicone because it was the only material that wouldn't degrade in the vacuum of space. Down here on Earth, because silicone is biologically inert, meaning the body doesn't attack it, it became the gold standard for medical implants, contact lenses, and catheters. It repels water, which is why it's in your hair conditioner to smooth frizz. It resists heat, which is why it replaced your metal spatula. So the next time you use a flexible ice tray or waterproof your window, remember Frederick Kipping. He thought he was making a mess, but he was actually paving the way for the modern world. If you enjoyed this slice of material history, please hit that like button and subscribe to Simple Things for more surprising stories behind the everyday. See you in the next one.